the mark scheme is your best friend for chemistry and every mark in chemistry counts there tend to be repeats every single year what i did to actually revise for my exams was hi guys welcome back to my channel and today i'm telling you guys how i got an a in chemistry and how you can too so just so you guys know, I sat A-level chemistry this year and I got a grade A and I sat that with the exam board, the lovely exam board, which was AQA. If you are doing OCR or any other exam board, this video does still apply because as my chemistry teacher would tell us, chemistry is chemistry. We actually, in the lead up to our exams, we did other exam board questions because she said with chemistry, it tends to be the same regardless of the exam board because you can't really change it so if you are watching this and you're thinking oh i don't have the aq exam board this still applies to you the first thing i do want to say about how to get good grades in chemistry you do need a good chemistry teacher if you don't have that it's still possible it's just going to be a lot harder for you i was blessed to have the best teacher in the entire world for chemistry and one thing that she always said to us which i'm going to say to you she said this very early on and i remember thinking what how does that make any sense i sat my exams and everything she said just clicked in my head she told us that 60 percent of the questions on your exam paper you will have seen before i was like what examples do is that they repeat past paper questions she said if you sit every single past paper exam that has ever been put out you will have seen 60 to 70 percent of all the questions that will come up in your summer exams that other 30 percent you're going to now need to use your brain and figure out what they're asking from you because with chemistry you tend to get questions that just want you to use a different part of your brain that you didn't know existed to try and answer something that you didn't know existed because the application in chemistry can kill you. And she kind of said that to us to just set the expectation that there's gonna be stuff you will know, 60 to 70%. There's gonna be 30% that is gonna be you giving it your best guess and you using the skills that you have to try and answer those questions that they're gonna throw in that are a completely different format, a completely different structure to anything that's ever come out the year before. I had that in my exams. So this past summer exams, they decided to do a different format of question with mechanisms. If you've not started year 13, you might not know what mechanisms are yet, but with mechanisms, basically it's a sequence of steps. And before they would say, just outline the sequence. Now they give you one you've never seen before and they want you to apply your knowledge of other mechanisms to try and predict what this current mechanism will be. That is something the exam board have not done before. They've done variations of that for us this year. They just decided to have fun with it. That's the advice that she gave to us and that's the advice I'm giving to you. What I did to actually revise for my exams was active recall. With chemistry, I feel like that needs to be your only method of studying. It needs to be some form of active recall. With me, I've spoken about this before, I did flashcards. I got an A4 notepad and I cut it up into horizontal strips. So there were four sections and I kept it connected to the notepad so that all my flashcards were all together, if that makes sense. So I had organic, inorganic, and then two physicals. And I would do my flashcards, question, answer, question, answer. What I would do in my flashcards, I would write exam question, exam question, answer. I would ask myself the question, try and remember it. I would either have a whiteboard and write out my answer or I would say it out loud so that I was physically doing something, I wasn't just thinking the answer. Then I would turn over and see how accurate I was. Now with that, I've talked about mark scheme specificity. My answers were to the mark scheme. If you're doing chemistry, a lot of things you will have realized is that the mark scheme wants things a certain way. My questions and my answers were written how the mark scheme tells it and how the mark scheme wants you to answer it so for example how to tell when something is optical this is off my head this may be incorrect knowledge because your girl did chemistry about two months ago but you know i'm talking about enantiomers racemic mixtures it rotates plane polarized light equally in opposite directions I will never forget that answer. Even if I forget the question, because I might have asked the question wrong. Some of you can check me, it might actually be wrong. But the answer rotates plane polarized light 
equally in opposite directions. I will never forget the answer because that's something that comes up year after year after year after year. So I got that exact question, I pop it in my flashcards. Every time I go through my flashcards, I cover that exam question. And then every time it comes up in an exam, I know the exact mark scheme answer. That is what you need to do when you make flashcards for chemistry. You need to have the exact mark scheme answers as your answer to the questions that you're asking. So sometimes I did flashcards and I said, these are my flashcards to understand the content. And then these are my flashcards that will actually help me get the marks in the exam, if that makes sense. So there's some topics in chemistry that like, for example, let's talk about transition metals, right? Ligands, uh, complexes, all of that stuff. I had, I had notes kind of fact sheets in flashcard form to help me understand what this topic is saying and then i had question answer question answer where it was common exam questions that come up now to make these flashcards one thing you need to be doing a is past papers but b you need to be doing topic questions so that when you're revising topics at a time you do the revision you take your notes you do the topic questions you then make your flashcards based on the mark scheme answers that have come up from those topic questions my second bit of advice find a good youtuber if you don't have a good chemistry teacher and i was blessed i had the best chemistry teacher in the entire world if you don't have a good chemistry teacher find a good youtuber my chemistry teacher told us my chem guy he was so good for chemistry he covered a lot of different examples as well so give him a look if you're doing chemistry and a lot of the things like i said different examples but it was still the same content so like some of his ocr videos were actually really helpful to me even though i did aqa and i know we've touched on this but the mark scheme is your best friend for chemistry everything you're doing needs to be mark scheme specific so when you are making flashcards mark scheme specific when you are taking notes mark scheme specific when you are blurting then go and look at a mark schemes for questions that are similar to the content you have just blurted and check that it is mark scheme specific because you will cry over writing particles instead of molecules you will cry over writing molecules instead of particles you'll cry over writing kinetic energy instead of thermal energy like little tiny things or even just writing energy and not specifying which type little tiny things like that writing more instead of many more it will drive you mad if you are not mark scheme specific and there are some answers that year on year on year on year get asked over and over and over and over again you need to know your definitions this one's a no-brainer and this is one that i had drilled into my head even before i knew what a mechanism was you need to know all your mechanisms my chemistry teacher told us if you go into an exam if you go into an organic paper not knowing all your mechanisms you may as well not see the paper that's what she said to us. You need to know every single mechanism. You need to know every single one. What I would do for that, so I had different forms of doing this with my flashcards. I would either draw the mechanism, then I would write, what is the name of this mechanism? What are the conditions, reagents, temperature, catalyst? And then the next page, I would answer all of that. Or I would write the name of the mechanism. I would write like elimination, conditions, reagents. And then the next page of the flashcard would then be the mechanism. So as I'm doing these flashcards, I have my whiteboard with me and I would draw out the mechanism each time, write the full set of conditions needed, write the full set of reagents, if there's a catalyst needed, anything that I need to know for that mechanism, I would just blur it all out onto a whiteboard, turn over the flashcard and check that everything I've done is matched up. Going over mechanisms, it needs to be a weekly thing. From February to your exams, every week, even if you're not revising organic every week, you need to be looking at mechanisms because the mechanisms will come up, they will come up a lot and they will come up in ways that will throw you. And if you don't know simple things like whether or not it needs reflux, whether or not it's at 50 degrees, whether or not there's two catalysts needed, whether or not you need to know these things off the top of your head if you wanna get those top grades. If you're making flashcards mechanisms, test yourself, do partial mechanisms, or do a wrong mechanism and then ask yourself what is wrong with it. Cause my teacher actually did this with us. She gave us four mechanisms and all of them 
didn't get full marks and she asked us to identify where were people losing the marks in these mechanisms. That is a really effective way to revise. If you can do incorrect mechanisms, when you get them wrong, take a photo, come back to it a week later and ask yourself, why didn't get this get four out of four? Then you will start to understand the mechanism instead of just memorize it. One thing I will say is crucial if you want an A or A star, those small niche topics that get assessed every four to five years that people think, oh, you don't need to revise this you need to know them like the back of your hand one thing i will say is shapes there was a question that came up in this summer exam and it was a shape and this shape came up only in the 2017 paper and it had never come up again there was a question as well a good three marks that again had only ever been asked in the 2018 paper only ever been asked in the 2018 paper and it had never been asked again and it came up again in my exams literally the week before i had gone to my teacher and i had showed her this question and she had told me oh i've never seen this question come up in recent years and it came up for my exam and i knew what to write because a week before i had just read the mark scheme i'm telling you guys now those niche small things that come up every so often you never know which year they're going to come up for you. So make sure you know how to do them. Things like with the complexes, like EDTA, right? It's a horrible thing to draw. We hate drawing Edda. We hate optical isomers. You need to know them. Things like EN, you need to know how to do them because they will come up and they will come up as a six marker. And then you'll be like, oh, this is a niche topic. I didn't think it would come up. Why is it here for six marks? And every mark in chemistry counts. So make sure those tiny little topics that you don't like or that you don't think will come up or that you don't think will be assessed, make sure you know them down to a T. Right, paper three will come and it will slap you in the face. Paper three will come, it will slap you in the face. I wholeheartedly believe the only reason I did not get an A star in chemistry is because of paper three. Paper three, one, you need to know how to draw graphs. That's gonna sound very common sense. You're gonna think, I've been drawing graphs since I was two years old. I never, ever, 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 ever got full marks on a graph question, ever. And my teacher marks for the exam board. And it's so small and you don't even realize you're making the mistakes, but graph questions are designed to make you lose marks. So make sure you practice graph questions like it's your dying breath close to your exams. Another thing about paper three that you will need to know, drawing equipment for practicals. <sighs> you would think it's common sense. You would think it's common sense. Every time there was a mock and there was a draw question, do you know how many mocks I got? Zero out of three. You need to know how to draw a gas range. You need to know how to draw a round bottom flask. You need to know how to draw a condenser properly. You need to know where the thermometer needs to be in a reflux experiment. You need to know how to set up a distillation experiment. You need to know these things. You need to know them. And they will come up when you least expect and then you'll be like, oh my God, I thought this was simple. I thought drawing a gas range made complete sense. And then you will get your mock back and it will say zero out of two because you forgot to draw one little tiny pencil line to indicate the end of the syringe. Or you forgot to draw one little tiny line to indicate that there is no gap between the syringe and the conical flask that is collecting the gas. These are tiny things, tiny things, which will make you lose all your marks. So please, please learn how to draw learn how to draw for paper three and actually you need to know these things for paper two and one because chemistry lately is just putting everything all together when you're doing practicals and lessons if your practical doesn't work make sure you go out of your way to then watch an accurate video of how it should have worked because i'm telling you now in my exam i sat there and i had to think to myself okay when i was doing titration what did I do next? What did I do here? What did I do here? When we was crystallizing, what did I do here? How did we make aspirin? And I had to sit and I had to remind myself of what I had to do in those practicals. So again, for paper three, make sure you know what you are doing. Read up on your practicals, know how to draw and know how to do graphs. Multiple choice, you need to be dropping no marks on multiple choice. Multiple choice is where it actually will make or break your mark. 
because for chem you really can't be losing marks to get an a star in chemistry you need to be dropping max 15 marks per paper so for for paper three the multiple choice is a place you should see is this is where i gain marks not this is where i lose marks the multiple choice tends to repeat itself a lot as i said at the beginning you have seen 70 to 60 percent of the questions already with multiple choice there tend to be repeats every single year and if you look at the year before the questions that did badly the year before they then to just chuck the exact same like word for word the exact same question they will chuck in the year after so make sure you know your multiple choice multiple choice is something that takes 30 minutes to practice you should be doing your multiple choice in 30 minutes a minute a mark you should be racing through that I know I'm saying this now and it sounds scary, but as you build up over time, you'll get quicker and quicker and quicker. You will notice patterns. You'll know straight away this is wrong, this is right, and you will get better at doing multiple choice. For context, me, multiple choice, I never was getting 30 out of 30. When I'm saying you have to drop no marks, that needs to be your mindset. I was getting 25, 26 out of 30 every time I did multiple choice. That's the level you want to be at so that you know multiple choice is, is like, it's is certain, it's definite. You're not dropping marks here. This is a comfortable place for you to be when your exam is finishing in 20 minutes and you have to race through. You're not going to panic and be like, oh my God, it's multiple choice. You're going to be like, okay, it's multiple choice. I've got this and I can just go ahead and get 25 out of 30. That needs to be the, the kind of mindset you're going into with multiple choice. The last bit of advice I have for you is advice that our chemistry teacher did for us and she actually said, Said it for us she made us a timetable starting from march in order to do every single chemistry past paper that has ever been put out when i'm gonna tell you guys if she didn't do this i would not be sat here with my a because it doesn't matter how much content you know if you don't have exam practice if you don't have exam question practice and if you don't know what the mark scheme wants from you you're not getting an a star you're not getting an a so i would advise you all to do the same do an exam paper a week, at least one chemistry exam paper a week, every single week, starting from about February, March, in the run up to your exams. If you're doing AS, I advise you the same thing. That will ensure that one, you've covered all your exam papers before the actual exam day. Because one thing she did say that I actually realized, she was like, if you've not done six, seven years worth of exams, when are you planning to do them? because the three days before your exam you can't do that many exams in one and she was completely right i only left one year i think i left the 2018 and i didn't touch that ex that year but i did all the others so then in the lead up to every single chemistry exam i did 2018 paper one paper two and paper three to practice before the exam and that way i knew i have done every single chemistry paper that has come out i have seen every single chemistry question that has come out i have answered every single chemistry question that has come out so i went into my exam prepared knowing that when questions repeat i've seen them already that's the position you want to be in and again when you're doing these mocks see what you got wrong mark it thoroughly get your score then go back to all the questions you got wrong and add those questions into your flashcards that's what you have to do you do a mock you add the questions you got wrong into your flashcards. You do a mock, you add the questions you got wrong into your flashcards. So then when you go over your flashcards, you are then going over the questions you got wrong again. So now when you come to do another mock, you will have got all your content done. You will know the mark scheme specific terminology and you also know where you're likely to make mistakes and you will have covered those topics ready to go into your next exam doing even better. That's my advice. And I really, truly do hope it works for you. If you have any questions at all or need any help with anything, drop me a comment and I will get back to you. But like, comment, share, subscribe. If you're doing chemistry, I wish you all the best. And I will see you very soon with another video.